fast forward, say, 20, 30, 40 years, looking back on your career, how do you want to be remembered? I don't know. I mean, the worry is that because of the perception of who you are or what you do when you're at the top, sometimes you never really get the credit of being a good person and loving the sport. So that's why, you know, when, the work that I do in the community now, that's not about proving to people that I'm a good person, but I would like, I think the older I get, I, I want to be remembered as the greatest promoter of all time. I mean, that, that would be the first thing, but things like that only happen when you're dead. You know, when you go, I was sort of saying to someone the other day, you know, someone passed and I said, you know, all these amazing, wonderful things that we say about people when they pass, we never said it to them when they were here, you know? Um, and I think with, I want to be remembered for someone that gave back as well to the sport. And I think I'd like to be remembered as someone that showcased boxing within the community and how it can change change people's lives and the influential role it can play. I'd like to change people's minds about boxing. Parents, you know? I, I sometimes go up and if my, you know, one of my daughters is playing football or whatever it is, I talk to some of the parents and, you know, she goes to a very nice school and they'll say, you know, you should get your, your little one down the boxing club. And they're like, okay, right oh, you know. And I said, you have, I don't say it to them, I think you have no idea. Like, and it's, oh, not having my daughter or son punched in the head. So you don't have to. You don't have to spar. My daughter don't spar yet. But she goes down there for an hour and a half and leaves absolutely soaked in sweat and just feeling really positive and confident and, and a part of something, you know? But it's just that perception. That's why the funding is always a struggle at government level because they just don't, they don't know. You know, the ones that do go down, they do help because they see it firsthand. Absolutely. Uh, one question away from the boxing. What would you say has been your biggest achievement outside of the sport? Or all sport in general? Mm. I mean, obviously, you know, you talk about becoming a father. That's that's a, a big moment in any man or woman's life. And, and that's challenging, you know, especially with one teenage daughter and, and one 10 year old who are obsessed with the phones, you know, and I, I've actually become now, I, was like, I must be boring the life out of people because I'm talking about the danger of these phones and social media and algorithms and all this information and negativity that's infiltrating the mind of the next generation. You know, I don't want to sound like Andrew Tate or Carl Froch, but it's like I was actually talking to Froch about it on Saturday and, it, you know, as wild as some of these uh, conspiracy theories are, this is this is fact. You know, it's it's terrible what the kids are digesting now in terms of information and content. And I'm really concerned about that generation. So I think outside of business, yeah, that I think there's a lot to do. I probably lived quite a selfish life for the last 10 or 12 years in terms of business, business, and, you know, obviously family as well, but like in terms of what I could be giving back, you know, and now we've got 40 staff worldwide, Frank Smith's doing more and more and taking more responsibility. I do have capacity to do a little bit more to help. So I think that um, we're really proud. We have something called the Matchroom Sport Charity Foundation, which we've donated well over a million pounds in the last couple of years to local charities or anybody that writes in children's hospices and stuff like that. And that's important to us to, to give back as well, because obviously we've done very well and we're doing very well. And we don't like... That's the thing with me and my dad. We're not lavish, really. You know? Like, I know it sounds a bit naff, but tomorrow I'll jump on a train at Bitteriki and I'll go up to Liverpool Street and I'll pop on the tube over to the West End for my meetings. I don't have a Rolls Royce Phantom sitting outside with a bloke with a hat going, Good morning, Mr. Hearn. Where are we going to? I'll just... And same with my old man. Same with him. He's He just wanders around with his briefcase around the, around the trip like we don't have planes we don't have yachts we don't have like it's just we just so the money 
we've done well and we're like you know we, we've got enough money to be able to give back and make a difference i think that's a nice thing to be able to do